Yeah. People get your thoughts on knowing how, how much you understand about Charlie Munger and what about its side of investing about their foray into Occidental because for the longest time they had avoided materials and very cyclical commodities and then entering into Occidental and they keep ramping up their stakes. What do you think of that as an investment? Yeah, so I think both of them have been investors in in oil and gas for a very long time. You know, Bob Munger made a investment in what was eventually one of his biggest mistakes because he didn't buy enough Delridge Oil in 1977. So you know that's like you know 46 years back. So they've they've and you know Charlie will tell me things. You know, I I have a good friendship with Charlie. I usually see him four or five times a year for dinner, and I used to play a lot of bridge with him. You know, sometimes I'd be at his place and he'd tell me, and he's living in, you know, Hancock Park in LA. He says that we are sitting on top of an oil field, you know. And, and so then he explained to me how that whole area actually was an oil field, but then because so many humans moved in and the real estate prices became more, it became more attractive to build homes and sell the real estate that way than to, you know, drill for oil that LA basically developed without really extracting the oil, so to speak. So it still sits there. I, I, one time I was talking to him and he, he mentioned that he would love to like have a investment in Exxon and be able to get a commitment from the management that they would do no more CapEx and they would simply run all the fields with the cash flows going to the shareholders. And he had calculated it'd be a tremendous investment. And, uh, and of course, oil companies don't think that way. And, but Oxy thinks that way. So I think the Oxy investment, if you study Occidental, what you'll find is they don't really have exploration going on. So if we look at the whole fracking business and you know, the Permian Basin and all of that, Basically, when you drill a well, you've got a 90 plus percent shot of what's going to come out. I mean, the, the probabilities are really high. And it's not like what used to be conventional oil. So here you've got very definitive metrics going on. And so Oxy basically has no, almost no speculative drilling going on. And so in effect, it looks like a CD. They're clipping the coupons. And what Oxy is doing is they have a huge gusher of cash flows coming out. And that huge gusher of cash flows is only going into buybacks and dividends. So it's all being pumped out to shareholders. And he loves that. And then they made an investment in Chevron I think the reason they made the investment in Chevron is also Chevron has a very large position in the Permian Basin. And if Oxy was large enough, they wouldn't have gone to Chevron. Just like he bought all the US airlines, you know, a while back he bought all the, because he couldn't make one bet because the size of the capital is so large. He was forced, kind of like you guys are forced, you know, when you find one airline, you got to buy all of them because you have 30 positions, you know, to put to work. So I think the Chevron bet is a heavily a bet based on this non-exploration risk. And you know, the oil business lately, and of course, UT Austin knows this really well with the 8 billion that's coming out every year into the endowment. You know, people think Harvard has a biggest endowment, but they don't really understand. You know, we are the biggest endowment here. You know, and uh, you've got, I mean, I haven't seen a business school building as good as this one. You know, long live the oil fields. <laughs> so, so I think the, the, bet, the bet with Chevron and Oxy is a coupon clipping bet. And so I think Buffett looked at what US treasuries are paying him. And he doesn't want downside. So he looked at Oxy as US treasuries on steroids. And I think that's why he went with that bet.